iBox Pro Kit Springs are perfect for the 2007 to 14 GT500 owner who's tired of the stock 4x4 stance and wants to go with a more aggressive look without affecting stiffness or ride quality much. Depending on model year and body, you'll be getting a 1 and a 1.5 inch drop in the front and a 1.2 to 1.7 inch drop in the rear. These springs will also improve handling by lowering the center of gravity, but they use a progressive spring rate so they won't feel overly stiff unless you throw your car into corners. They are designed for a plug and play install and they're compatible with stock or aftermarket wheels and tires. So I'll be giving this two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter and expect about half a day's work to get this done. The 2007 to 10 coupe and convertible are gonna see the biggest drop with an inch and a half in the front and 1.7 inches in the rear. For the 11 to 14s, only the coupe is compatible and that will give you about an inch drop in the front and 1.2 inch drop in the rear. Regardless, you're gonna be seeing a more aggressive nose forward stance that'll get rid of a lot of that wheel gap with stock wheels and tires. If you're running a set of aftermarket wheels and tires like American Muscle pre-configured combo kits, the springs will fit, but the amount of gap will be dependent on your setup. Either way, you're getting at least an inch in the front and rear, and that's gonna lower your center of gravity to give you an overall better handling ride. iBox set these springs up with a progressive spring rate, which is great for street cars and daily drivers. They'll allow your Shelby to feel comfortable when cruising down the highway, but will progressively get stiffer as you push your car, especially through your favorite twisty back roads, where you'll notice the decreased body roll and greater control. The iBox will be an overall firmer ride than a factory setup, but it's in no way a rough ride. The progressive rate will be more forgiving than a track-oriented linear spring, or compared to a more aggressive suspension lowering kit. All while still reducing squatting during heavy acceleration and nosedive under hard braking. With a price just north of 260 bucks, these are one of the more expensive options for springs for your Shelby GT500, but not by much. The cheaper options are usually only linear spring rate, which will be great for performance, but maybe a little too rough for the daily driver. You can go with a slightly cheaper Ford Performance Progressive setup, but the drop is a little less, so you won't get the same look as the Eibach Pro Kit. These springs are a bolt-on design, and it'll take about half a day's work to get them on, so I'll be giving this two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter. You're gonna need a few tools to get this done. A basic ratchet and socket set with a lift or jack and jack stands, as well as a pry bar. Today we're gonna show you how to install the Eibach Pro Kit springs on this 2013 GT500. With the vehicle up in the air, we're going to start by removing the tires. For today's install, we're going to start with the front disassembly. I'm going to remove the brakes just to reduce some hanging weight. There's a 10 millimeter inside here that holds the brake line. We're going to take that out and then pull the caliper off. A lot of times with factory rotors, they're going to have these little Retainers on them just to hold the brake rotor up so it doesn't tilt. You're gonna have to pull those off. A lot of times we don't reuse them, so just grab them with a pair of vice grips or wire cutters and try to get them off. So the next step is going to be to disconnect the sway bar link and the steering. So you're gonna use a 17 millimeter wrench on the backside, 18 millimeter socket, and we'll go ahead and pull that off. With the net removed from the tie rod end, we're gonna place it back on a couple of threads just to catch it. And then we're gonna smack the knuckle with a hammer to get it to unseat. All right, so the next step after you have all that disconnected is to remove these bolts of the lower strut. So we're gonna go ahead and use an 18 millimeter, pull those out. All right, next step is going to be to remove the ABS wire from the strut, so when we take the strut out, that doesn't get caught. Then we're gonna take the nut off of here, pull that the rest of the way out. Now we're gonna remove the second bolt out of the strut. All right, last step before we pull the strut completely out is going to be to disconnect uh, the sensor and line coming from the bottom of the strut. All right, so now that we have everything disconnected, we're ready to pull the strut out. We're gonna lower the vehicle down, pop the hood open, Take the nuts off of that, remove it, and then we'll get the spring swapped. Now that we have the strut out of the car, we're gonna stick it in our spring compressor, compress it, pull the top off, switch the springs out. Once you got your new spring on, 
the top nut tight. We're gonna put it up through the shock tower and reattach it. Now that we have the strut back in, we're gonna go ahead and put all the suspension and steering back together. I'm gonna start off by reattaching the steering knuckle. Go ahead and reattach the tie rod end. Tighten up using an 18 millimeter. Reconnect the strut cord. Next, we're gonna reconnect the sway bar end link. Reinstall your rotor. Reinstall the caliper. Last step is to reinsert that 10 millimeter hole in the brake line. Now that we've completed the front install, we're gonna work on the rear. First is to support the axle with jack stands. Using a 15 millimeter socket, remove the, the sway bar and link bolts. After you've disconnected your sway bar end links, we're gonna work on removing the lower shock bolt. After you've disconnected your shocks, it's time to lower the axle down and remove the stock springs. With the factory springs removed, you're ready to install the new springs. With the new springs in place, we're gonna raise the axle back up, reconnect the shocks and the sway bar. So now that we have the shocks back in, we're gonna raise the sway bar back up put the bolts in the end links. Tighten with a 15 millimeter. Once you have the rear back together and everything's assembled and tightened, you can remove the jack stands. That's my review on iBox Pro Kit Springs for your 07 to 14 GT500. Check these out and more at AmericanMuscle.com.